236, let's stand and sing the first and last Amazing Grace 236.
We saw it in our country on September 12th how it worked, and we've lost it. Yeah. But we've seen crystal clear this week, like last week, the previous years, how we, we pray for one another. God's going to be with us, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be with us through whatever the case may be. Sicknesses, you know, you lose someone you love, he's going to be with you those tough times. Mm -hmm. He'll be with us. But it seems like we forget. We're people with short-term memories, aren't we? Sure. We need to start remembering these two verses and how God will be with us as individuals, families, and a country. Yeah. Let's not forget. Let's stand and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
us couldn't take our clothes and had to their clothes on one side. It, we was full and they loved seeing us show up <coughs> there. Then we uh, took the front trip to Women's Mission. We got to look at it a little bit. It's come along good. Uh, they they don't own a dime on that place. They've done all the work with money they paid and saved up. So that place, it's taken them some time, but they're working on it slowly. And uh, the half that they live in is uh, pretty much done. It's, it's nice inside. And uh, they, they got a little bit of work to do, but they, they've got some money. And I'm sure the way they pray and believe in faith, I'm sure they'll get some more money for whatever they need. And uh, about every day, we got preach to but I don't like them. Uh, <laughs> we survived, I tell you. <laughs> he, uh, he would say he stepped on our toes some more up there. Uh -huh. He's a good good preacher. And then there were some other guest preachers he had come in. And he was good as well. Uh, we felt sorry for their pulpit up there. We didn't know how it stood because a lot of the preachers, they would just smack that pulpit and you'd think that thing would break in half the way they would. You know, preach it to us. We, we had a good time with all the services. And then we went out every day, um, Thursday and Friday. We actually went down into Columbus, uh, did some street preaching and uh, holding signs, giving out track. And uh, I mean, up there, uh, whatever you want to witness to, whatever you want to preach to, they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to some people up there. Uh, I'm assuming it was a boy and girl, but I think they just wanted to be. I think they wanted to be awesome what they were, the way they was at, the way them outfits were, I think. And, uh, but just had a good time, got to witness to them. They didn't really, I don't think they liked what I said, but I uh, had a good time. So I was, you know, just trying to give a good testimony there, but had a good time with them. And, and then the Ohio State game, uh, it was yesterday. They lost, by the way, if anybody kept up with that. <laughs> Maybe because we got rejected. I don't know. Maybe the Lord done something there, I don't know. But, uh, a few of us, you know, uh, I guess, I don't know, Hope and Dave and Patty, they must stand in the wrong corner. They always get hated on. And when people get to me, they just love me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they just seem to take what I got. I don't know why. They, they like them tracks and uh, have a good time. They, a lot of people go by, they tell you, you know, I don't want to tell I'm Catholic, I'm Muslim, and all this different stuff. And it's just good that, you know, you can reach them people because, you know, it's a big variety. Uh, mm -hmm. Brought these up here. We, we all left the church, probably everybody left the church had something like this. And I know when I got done, I was out. So, I mean, that, that right there, if you take that, about probably maybe 20 people, that's how many tracks got out. There was 100,000 people up there. So. Mm -hmm. And they also, them, some of them guys preached to them and, and held signs. And so uh, these people up there at that ballgame, they, they seen and heard the word of God uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. And maybe, maybe it'll change some hearts. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. And, uh, but... You know, we had, a, I think I had a blast. I can't speak for everybody. I just had a good time. Uh, nobody else does or not. But I think it's fun. I like going up there and doing all that, seeing that. A lot different West Virginia. Uh, more farther north. But uh, yeah, y'all probably didn't get that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I get that. We're on Facebook, so I can't say too much. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, a little bit different up there in West Virginia, so I'll tell you that much. But, uh, Hopefully some of y'all will, will pray, and maybe some of y'all youngsters or young people, maybe next year, it's the same time, it's always a week after Labor Day, y'all go up there and just have a good time with us, we, we're always doing something fun up there, but I appreciate your time for that, and I'm going to turn it over to Dave back up before he's going to give you a lesson. <laughs> yeah. oh, I told him back up quarterback. <laughs> Y'all want to know what's happened in the last two and a half? 
five years at the Cashmere Baptist Church. <laughs> Plus or minus a few pieces of gum. Or, I'm just going to lay that here. We'll try this thing out. I try to talk loud. And I'll be honest, yesterday I was thinking a little bit about the Sunday school lesson and I don't know if took this in my pocket. And uh, I was thinking about some things I could do maybe towards the end or at the beginning of this lesson and, uh, and then all of a sudden, maybe an hour or so later, Craig called me and said, you mind if I speak about this? And I thought, there it is. You know, and, and as I thought about it even more and more, this, uh, this is, is this too loud? It seems like it's like super loud. I feel like these people over at the pond can hear me. Maybe they need to. Maybe they do. I don't know. But uh, Dave asked me a couple weeks ago to do a little introduction to the book of James. Because uh, you all know we've been on Acts from, I think we started it the middle of May. First little part of May. We just finished it up. So uh, we talked about doing this in the summer. Um, so I'm going to do a little introduction. But just... Listening to Craig talk, and it's you know it's a perfect introduction to James is what he was talking about and the things that they're doing, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But let me get my place in my Bible. All right, so I'm gonna, if you wouldn't mind bow your head, I'm gonna lead us in prayer before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another another great Lord's Day. Thank you for giving us the health and strength to be out here. Thank you for the people that came and the children that's in Sunday school and all the teachers and everyone that's uh, you know, able to be out here today. Lord, we thank you very much for all your blessings. Lord, I ask that you lead me and guide me today through this lesson that uh, you'll give me the words I need to, need to say and that everyone will be receptive. And, uh, Lord, that I'm not a stumbling block to anyone. Uh, Lord, again, thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the book of James. Uh, I thought I might just open this up. Anybody have any favorite verses or anything about the book of James that stands out to you over the years of reading? It's a very small book. It's one that if you sit down and read it, you say, I want to read through a book of the Bible. This is a good one to, a good one to read through. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a little over 2,500 words or something like that. It's five chapters. But anything that you all want to, if you can remember, stand up that stands out. Once I started reading through it, because um, I've read it before several times, and I'm sure thing, many things have been preached out of it in church that I've been in, but, you know, when you prepare for, for a lesson, you know, you kind of look at things a little bit differently. So there's a lot of things that I would read, and I think, man, I remember hearing that. I've heard a lot of sermons about that. I've heard. So anything, anybody got anything you want to add? Craig? Yeah. Uh, I like James 4, 7. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Yep. And David mentioned it last week that this is, a lot of people consider this to be the Proverbs of the New Testament. Uh, and there's a lot of truth to that. Um, there's a lot of, um, a lot of people can, you can pick, pick a lot of these verses out that a lot of people maybe have as a life verse or something that they cling to. Um, and it's very true. So we're going to talk, the, the Sunday school book deals a lot with who, who James was. Um, and, you know, this is something I was, you know, I struggle with. I'm a teacher, so, you know, a lot of times, and obviously in teaching the Bible, you want to teach what the truth is. Well, who, t who, who wrote this book? James. Good job, Andrea. <laughs> James. Do you all know how many Jameses there are in the Bible? Two, three, four. Okay. There you go. Two, three, four. You know? And I, you know, I'll be honest, okay, I, I looked, I, okay, I went online, I typed in James, I read every single verse that had James in it. There are clearly different Jameses in the Bible. But, and this is where you have to be careful, and I even wrote at the top of my, my notes that I have, be careful with commentaries. Because this, this Bible right here, which I think it's, it's an old Schofield Bible. Anyone have the old Schofield study Bible? It says there's just two Jameses, okay? This uh, Sunday school book right here says there's three. Okay. I got online, and it's, that's kind of dangerous too. One pastor, I think a good fundamental Baptist pastor, says there's four. So, you know what, to me that said, you know, the Lord's going to lead me down the path of, you know, we're not going to get caught up on which James, 
Okay, we think who we, there's a pretty good chance of which James it may be, but there is some debate. Um, there are actually three Jameses. Uh, one of them is mentioned a lot in the New Testament, and it's the son of Zebedee. Um, you hear a lot about Peter, James, and John. Okay, that's the James, one of the, the disciples. Okay, so he's mentioned quite a few times in here. Uh, there's also another James, James, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, that was, that was one I thought, well, I've never really paid a lot of attention to that one. Okay, there's another one. And then, who's the third one? Jesus' brother. brother. Okay. Now, this Bible says that James, the son of Alphaeus, is Jesus' brother. Okay. You know, the, you know I'm not going to get caught up on that kind of stuff. And that was one thing. When I first started studying this, I'm like, man, this is driving me crazy. Well, that's probably why it was driving me crazy. I mean, I shouldn't have been going that much into it. Okay, I think if it's in the Bible, I believe it. Okay, it's true. It doesn't say specifically, so I think if the Lord wanted us to know specifically. Now, there's some pastors that had some really good explanations. There's some that I watch a lot that Craig told me about that breaks verse by verse. And this guy had his beliefs. And, but that doesn't change what the Bible, what it says. Um, so let's look a little bit at some of these. At, uh, I guess more than likely the two James is the, the, the disciple James is... The one that, that he specifically said he thought wrote it. And then the, the book and a lot of the stuff I looked in looked like maybe the, the son of uh, Jesus' brother. Um, and I think where we get a lot of this is, um, is some of the church traditions going way back have some kind of crazy, you know, and if it's, you know some of these traditions that are not biblical. Um, say a lot of things about Jesus' family and about Mary and this and that. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused and where a lot of people misidentify who some of these people are. But again, let's look at verse number one. Okay? This is the first, the only place that I was able to find that it has any recollection other than the commentary, which again, you've got to be careful with because it's not inspired commentary. But verse number one, chapter one, it goes, starts right off who wrote this thing. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Okay? So we know that it's James and that he's a servant of God. Okay, so that really could fit either one of those two Jameses that we talked about. I guess it could mention the other one. Um, but So let's look a little bit at the one. Um, anybody know what happened to James, the disciple? The one that's mentioned, the uh, son of Zebedee, John and James and Peter. What, anybody know what happened to James? Well, let's go. Let's look at um, Acts chapter 12. One reason I remembered is because about three months ago, I... I was back at quarterback for Dave uh, for a lesson that talked about this. Chap Acts chapter 12. We'll go back to Acts. You may think, oh, we're back in Acts again. <laughs> but we're back in Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. We'll start there. I'll let here's some pages turn. So, again, I'm just going to try to do a little bit of an overview of kind of get you prepared and then uh, Mr. Balangie is going to start you off next week with the going through verse by verse. So, verse number 1 of chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Okay. So there's, that's James, the one that we mentioned, the brother of John. That's the one that is uh, mentioned quite a bit throughout the gospel as being one of the disciples of Jesus, one of the twelve. So, uh, that's why a lot of people say, well, there's, this shows you right here he couldn't have written it. Because he actually died before they think this book was written. Well, that's even a little bit debatable, too. So, um, but it could have been. It could have been this guy. And if it was, you know, great. Okay, I don't I think that changes anything. Um, the other one, so let's look at um, what a lot of people will focus, and that's what this book mentioned is, is the James's, uh, James and Jesus' brother. So let's look a little bit about him. Anybody know anything about James's, uh, Jesus' brother, James? What? His oldest. His oldest. Yes. You know, the Catholic Church doesn't actually believe that it's his brother. They believe that it's a cousin. Because Mary, they believe, is a, a virgin her whole life. So therefore, couldn't have had any more children. So that's where a lot of people say, well, it's not really a brother. But you know, in, in the Bible, it says brother. So I'm going to go with that. Okay, I'm not going to go with church tradition of the Catholic Church. Uh, you know, early on, let's look at uh, John 7, 5. Let's go to John. We're going to skip around a little bit. Uh, let's look a little bit about this at this uh, James. The Gospel of John, 
chapter 7, verse number 5. All right, so this is Jesus speaking not long before, uh, not long before he was eventually uh, crucified. Uh, I think about a year or so before. Uh, so we'll start in verse number three. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he, and he, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Okay. So that right there was talking about Jesus' brothers. It's not talking about brethren in the way that we say brother. You know, talk, these are believers. He says his brothers did not believe in him. So we say right off, James early on was not a believer in Jesus. Okay, He's saying, you know, go show people. If you're actually doing these things that you say you're going to do, go show people. So there's, they're a little bit skeptical at first. But this is going to change, and I think this is good. And this is like a picture of a Christian. You know, we're not like, we don't, some people don't believe early. Some people have... You know, a lot of us have things happen in our lives or are lost for many, many years. And then great things can happen out of them. All right. So let's go again. Um, you know, actually, I'm not going to have you turn to this one. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 7. So there must have been some change in James, uh, the, the, the brother of, of Jesus. Um, I wrote some of these verses down so I could get to them quickly so we can cover some things. Um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 7. And this is talking about, um, this is Paul telling the, the church at Corinth about Jesus, Jesus' resurrection, uh, a little bit of the backstory. And then it says in verse number 7, after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Okay? So there's another viewing of James. So something must have happened there. Maybe he was going to see James, his brother. Uh, there's a special connection there. In Galatians, we see that Paul... One of the first people he saw when he went to Jerusalem, and this is another thing we just talked about a month ago, James was one of the first people he saw. Okay, This isn't James, the one that was killed. This is Jesus' brother James. So in Galatians 1.19, if you want to look there, I'm actually going to turn there and read a little bit more because that's kind of a, this kind of gives you a little bit of a picture as to the status and to the character of James. I don't know if you all remember, Paul was a, pretty mean dude there for a while and then when he was saved and uh, on his way to Damascus he goes back to Jerusalem and then they were going after him so there's a lot of people that are like uh, I don't know if I want to be associated with this Paul guy uh, but let's so we're at uh, where am I at? Galatians 1 19 Galatians 1 verse number 19 so again this is this is Paul Talking a little bit about his story. <clears throat> we'll start with verse 18. So he's talking about after he went to, uh, after he was saved and a certain amount of time. He says, then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Okay, so when Paul goes to Jerusalem, this is the apostle Paul. He sees Peter and then he sees James. Okay, so right here shows you okay, a little bit about James's character, a little bit about if Paul's going to see James, he must have some sort of status within the church in Jerusalem. Okay, and then one more verse I want you to look at. We're still in Galatians, so you can just stay right there and just kind of slide over the page. In Galatians 2.9. And here's Paul again. He's talking, he's, he's talking about the... These are the people that are, he calls them the pillars of the church. Verse number 9, And when James, Cephas, which is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, and that we should go into the heathen, and they into the circumcision. So right here, when the church is getting started, early part of the church, Paul goes to the Gentiles, and then we talk about James, Cephas, and John. So, to the Jews. Okay. So, right here, we're establishing that, you know, if this is the James who wrote the book of James, we're either one, okay, we see that they hold a certain status within the church at the time. Uh, many people believe that the brother, of James, or the brother of Jesus, James, became sort of like the head of the church in Jerusalem. So after the church kind of spreads out, remember, uh, they start preaching as soon as Jesus is, goes to heaven and he 
talks about, you know, basically the Great Commission, and they start, people are getting saved, and then all of a sudden the, the Jews start persecuting them, and Stephen is killed. And after Stephen's killed, a lot of the believers get scattered. They go. Okay? And a lot of people believe, we'll go, y'all go back to James, uh, go back to the beginning of James, I think that's where we'll, where we'll stay. Um, a lot of people believe that whenever he's talking, right at the very beginning, he says, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. A lot of people believe that that's what he's talking about. The early believers. So we know this is a very early book of the Bible. Uh, anywhere from, some people think in the early, around the early 40s, uh, so about 10 or 12, 15 years after Jesus' uh, crucifixion. There are some who have a late, much later date, but there's uh, a few issues with that. But we're not, again, we're not going to get caught up on that kind of stuff. But we do know that this is, a, this is one of the, or the earliest um, letter we have to the church. Uh, we know it is addressed to the tribes, so it probably is mostly Jewish people at the time. There's no mention of Gentiles throughout this book. So we know it's the church was mostly Jewish. So if you can kind of piece that together and you can kind of look through Acts and see about where this falls in, it's very early on in the church. Okay, uh, let's see what else we've got here. You notice that James doesn't brag right off the beginning either. You know, if it's the brother, he, you know, what would we do? You know, if I was writing a letter to somebody, and I'm like, I don't know, if I'm Jesus' brother, you know, I might just say, hey, I'm Jesus' brother, you know? Which, I mean, a lot of us, in our, a little bit in our pride, we'd be like, yeah, I'm Jesus' brother. Or even if you were one of the 12 disciples, would you not say, hey, I'm one of the 12 disciples. I was there before anybody was. He doesn't do that. He calls himself a servant. Okay? According to this, if you go back into the, the actual language of the text, he more or less calls himself almost like a slave, like a bondsman, someone who is actually a follower, someone who's willing to do anything. So he lowers himself. Humility, James starts with. Um, and we'll, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit into what Dave's going to talk about next week. But man, the first thing he talks about is we are going to have a lot of problems. Uh, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. So he's talking right off about the issues that they're having. And if these are the people that are scattered abroad and they're getting killed for their beliefs, they're probably having some problems. They're needing a little bit of encouragement. And that's what they're going to get here um, through, the book of, through the book of James. So, so we know he's, he's, uh, he's got humility. He's got integrity. Um, he also remember, if we talked about Acts 15, I remember a few months ago we talked specifically about remember when the Gentiles were being converted and some people were saying, hey, they need to get circumcised. Do you all remember that whole issue? Mm -hmm. And they went back to the council and had all the, the big big dogs of the church were meeting Paul and Peter and James was there. If you look at that section, who actually made the final decision? But James, the Lord's brother. So he had some authority within the church in Jerusalem. Uh, he's the one that said, you know, we're not going to trouble them, them, them with that, but you need to make sure you do this, basically, so you don't offend those Jews who are converts. So, anyway, he's got wisdom. He's got leadership. Now, the, the book mentions a whole section, if you read it, those of you who have the book, it mentions some about the church tradition and some of the Jewish history about James. You all remember what it said happened to James at the end of his life? Based on, not biblically, but based on what the tradition is. Y'all ever see, anybody see that? I found that a couple different places. Well, tradition says that he was thrown from the highest point of the temple down to the ground. And he still never denied Jesus. That the, the Jews were so upset with him that they took him to the highest point. And I can just imagine, I don't know how tall the temple was, but even if it's like as high as Cashmere Baptist Church, that's not feeling very good. And he still didn't, he still did not recant his faith. He still did not deny Jesus. And they even, and then some people even say he was thrown from the building, he hit the ground, he lived. And then they beat him to death because he still would not give in. So, you know, there's a little bit of, of I guess, you, you look at him, look at his reputation, okay? Look at what he stands for. It'd be tough for a lot of us, me personally, that I know to, if someone says, I'm going to throw you off a building, okay? You know, I'm not saying I would, but you know, it takes some strong faith. That takes some of that strong faith. A um, couple more things. Uh, so this is an epistle. This is a letter. So this is not um, this is not like Acts that we looked at. This is not a, a this is almost, that was almost like a church history of the early church, but this is more of a letter. It's it's written kind of differently, like more like Proverbs and less like Paul's letters. Paul's letters were almost like sermons, 
This is almost like chunks of pieces of sermons, but more of like uh, advice or more like uh, wisdom for, for Christians. Look at a few things. Um, yeah, it's hard to just kind of hit the high points of James because we're going to spend the next, uh, there's 13 lessons in here in, the, in, in five books of James. So we're going to be going very in depth. So I'm trying not to go too much in depth with what we're going to get into. There's a lot of stuff in here. But some of the themes that you're going to see in James. Uh, number one, he talks a lot about true faith. Uh, here, I'm going to tell you what my, they had a key verse in here. And that, that key verse, Jay, uh, David, David. Uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave Ballinger, we'll get to in a few weeks. Look at James 1, 22. I think this, in my opinion, this kind of sums up what James talks about. And that's what Craig was, when Craig got up here and was talking about the things that they did up in Columbus yesterday or the day before. I think that kind of is an example of this. It says, uh, verse number 22, or, uh, James 1. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So there, that's what James speaks a lot about. He speaks a lot about having an active faith. You know, a lot of people get hung up on things. A lot of false doctrine gets brought about because some of these things in James that try to say, well, James is saying you have to do works to get saved. Well, that's not what he's saying at all. Uh, he, and we'll get into this later, but he talk, he's talking more of like, you know, when you have faith, these are the things that you're going to do. Okay, these are going to be your, your, act, your faith in action. We talk about Abraham, and there's so many different people, great men of the faith that we know, not because we know that they sat in their house and that they had faith in their head, which they did, or in their heart, but they did stuff with their faith. They actually showed their faith, and that's what James speaks of. He speaks about that a lot in this book. He also talks about your public testimony. There was uh, one of the verses I want to point out really quickly, and I probably won't be able to find it, uh, and this is a, a parallel. It's, it's exactly the same thing that Jesus mentioned in, in Matthew, talking about basically, and I won't be able to find it now, that, um, uh, verse, chapter number 3, um, verse number 10. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. So, you know, you thought, you know, Earl Ancrum was... You know, he's pretty good at telling us what we need to do and out of, the, out of the Bible. This right here, it's a pretty harsh, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's harsh at all. It's truth, though. And that's what so many of us are. Uh, it talks about controlling the tongue. You, know, you can't say this and this at the same time. It's just not possible. So, again, that's that active faith kind of thing. So, he mentions that, how to treat others, uh, your public testimony. And then at the end of James, it's, he talks about sin. He talks about the re rebuking of worldliness. And warnings about sin, talking about the rich and um, basically how you know these things are going to be gone. So there is, it's a very short book of the Bible, but there is a lot of meat in this book. And one thing I'm going to challenge you to do, and it's something that I'm going to try my best to do, is to read through this, read through it before we get started in depth with it, and, and then as you read it again, continue to read through it. And there's so many different things that you can tie back. I found there were. Five things that I found just right off in James that were exact teachings that Jesus taught in Matthew. He was paralleling the exact same things back and forth. Okay, So there's a lot of really good stuff in here that you know you may overlook, you may not see, but we, we'll definitely cover most of it for the most part. Uh, let's see, i got a couple more minutes. Let's see what else i got down here. I don't have a whole lot written down to cover. Um, So, anybody got any questions? I don't have anything else. This, is a, this was a pretty short one. Uh, that was one reason I was praying to the Lord saying, you know, what can I do at the end? And then Craig came through. Or <laughs> like it was the Lord that came through. Uh, that's right. So, you know, I don't want to steal Dave's thunder. I could go ahead and start at the beginning of this, but I'll let him do that. Uh, anybody have any questions or anything you want to talk about? Yes, sir. Uh, one thing about this book is we compared it to Paul's writing. Paul writes a lot about how the church handles things and, and stuff like that. James here is, is dealing with Christianity on an individual basis. So when we go through this, it's going to apply a lot to your personal relationship with God, not necessarily how the church should do things, but what you should do as an individual. That's right. That's sort of like prove your faith by your works. That's right. 
Absolutely. And you know it starts with us. You know, if the church is going to turn around, if we're going to have a, we talked about revival and we uh, had a revival service, but it's going to start with us. And right. so it's these things right here that get it turned around. It starts with me, it starts with you. And I think this is a perfect um, addition to our revival, you know, to studying this and really trying to dig down into here and, and not try to, like me, I, this is part of my, my personality is to get caught up on the who wrote it and when they wrote it. Maybe that's I'm a history teacher. Maybe that's why I'm trying to dig too much into it. But I caught myself in like a in like a dark hole. I would read this and then I'd say, well, you know, my book, my Bible, I'm sure a lot of yours has references. And then I'd go to the next reference and it would send me to another reference and it would send me to another reference and it would send me back to here. And I'm like, ah. And then I'd read some one of the commentaries and I'm like, that's not. Uh, I don't know about that. So then I'm like, where, where are they getting that from? And it would send me here and send me there. And I'm like, this is. This is not good. This is not what I probably should be doing um, as far as preparing for this. But it, I think it's good to know. I think it's good to at least to study, to try to, to find out what the, the Word says. And, and if one thing I learned from this is, you know, focus on what the Bible says. Don't focus on what necessarily what man says. You know, we, you know, it's good for us to hear good, godly preaching, but the Word is where we're getting our truth from. The Word is, is where we're getting our, our doctrine from. So... Anyway, anybody else got anything to add to the book of James? I'm kind of excited to, to get into this. It's definitely meatier than what, there's a lot in Acts, but like Dave mentioned, it's a lot of history. It's a lot of, he did this, and then went here, and then they traveled here, and they traveled here, and it's all good stuff, stuff we need to know, but this is definitely meatier. There's a lot, a lot of things in here we can get into and discuss. And, you know, there are actually people who believe that the book of James is a rebuttal to Paul's uh, letters, which I think is outrageous, but... Um, I saw that online. That's why you got to be careful looking at that stuff. You just don't know what people are saying. Um, it's basically openly saying that the Bible is not inspired, if that's the case. If it's a rebuttal, that means there's two, Bible, two books that go against each other. I think they, they may sound like it from the surface or look like it, but once you start digging, they actually are in harmony with each other. And I think that's everything in the Bible. And the preachers mentioned that many, many times about contradictions that people may say, but they're actually not. So... Anybody else got anything? Thank you, Jody, for that. Anybody else got anything you want to add to this? All right, so um, the I'll go ahead and tell you the verse for next week if you want to be looking at it. For the lesson for next week starts, um, it's called, the, the title of it is Faith in, in Resilient Trials. Faith is resilient in trials. And I think we can learn a lot from, all of these have, they start with faith is, and that's what this is teaching us within this, Lesson. So it's James 1, the key verse is James 1, verses 2 and 3. So that's pretty easy. It's the next two verses after where I left off. Those are your key verses for next week if you want to uh, be studying those. And also if you want to really focus on certain verses, the lesson is uh, verses 2 through 12. So just the very beginning, read through chapter 1. I would read through the whole thing. If I was you, it takes maybe 15, 20 minutes, I guess depending upon how fast or slow you read. But it's very... It's a very quick read, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. Okay? Anything you want to add? Okay. Dave, would you mind closing the service for him, please, with prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this uh, day this morning, Lord, be able to be here. Lord, be able to meet together, Lord, be able to hear your word and learn more about your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, at the Sunday school class, we're fixing to go through the book of James, Lord, that you will be with us, Lord, help us, Lord, to encourage us, Lord, to, and uh, to come to the Lord to to study a little bit before the Lord had really get into it, Lord, and uh, have a desire to really draw something and learn something and uh, be able to apply in our lives, Lord. I pray you be with our, our teachers, Lord, that uh, they will uh, be with them, guide them as they teach us throughout this book, Lord, and the guide us and direct us, Lord. Help us to learn something, Lord. Be with us this morning, Lord, and be with the preacher, Lord, this morning. And bless him, Lord, and speak through him this morning. Jesus, Lord.